Hello, my name is Elif. I make anatomy and medicine videos. If you like my videos, please subscribe my YouTube channel and follow me on my Instagram and Facebook pages. Anatomical terminology. As a term, anatomy is basically formed by two Greek words. These are ana, which means to up, and tome, which means to cut. The anatomy term formed by combining the words ana and tome means to dissection, to cut up or to cut open. Anatomy is a branch of biology that studies the structures and parts of organisms. It has a universally accepted vocabulary in medicine and it contains major part of medical terminology. Most of anatomical terms are derived from Latin and Greek. Knowing the term's origins is helpful to memorize structures and rebuild your anatomical knowledge. Anatomy creates a common language among medical professionals that allows relevant structures to be defined accurately. Using these terms clearly is important to be understood and communicate with patients, just as other medical professionals. To describe body structures correctly, internationally accepted descriptive terms are used. These terms define relative structures clearly and specify the position of its organs and parts relatively. Descriptive terms include positional and directional terms. All anatomical descriptions, such as extremities and its directions, or, for example, type of movements, described by to normal anatomical position. Normal anatomical position is while standing upright, head facing forward. Forward in Latin means anterior, so we can call it facing anteriorly. The arms are hanging by the side, palms facing forward or anterior, and thumbs pointing away from the body. The feet are slightly parallel and toes oriented to anteriorly or to forward. This descriptive remark is used worldwide for anatomical descriptions. This allows you to clarify relationships between body parts, even though in different positions of the body. For example, if your patient or body is lying on their side or face upward position in medicine, it's called as supine position or face down position or prone position, relevant body parts can be discussed clearly thanks to normal anatomical position. Now let's talk about anatomical planes or cardinal planes. The plane is the area perpendicular to the axis where the movement is occurred. Axes and planes are considered on joints. All movements are defined according to normal anatomical position and in normal anatomical position, there are three definite planes and three different axes passing through the body. They are perpendicular to each other and the point where they all intersect is gravity center. This center is approximately one or two centimeters in front of the second sacral vertebra. All anatomical descriptions are based on three main imaginary planes. These are coronal plane, in other words, frontal plane, sagittal plane, and horizontal or transverse plane. This is called as transverse plane because it is also transverse to the ground. Coronal plane or frontal plane is also known as in Latin plana frontalia, plana coronalia. Plana means plane in Latin. Coronal term is also derived from Latin and it means garland, wreath or crown. The coronal plane is called as coronal because it passes through the stura coronalis. Stura coronalis on the other hand is a crown-shaped structure that extends above the skull. Because of this similarity, it is called as corona. Morphological similarities in anatomy are frequently used in naming. For example, coronavirus was named as corona because of its similarity to the crown. Coronal plane is a vertical plane passing through the body from right side to the left side. It also same with vice versa, I mean left side to the right side. And it divides into body anterior, which means front, and posterior, which means back portions. Sagittal or lateral plane is also known as plana sagittalia in Latin. Sagitta means arrow. Imagine an arrow passing through your forehead. This plane passes through the body like a wide and flat planar arrow, dividing the body right and left parts. Sagittal plane is a vertical plane passing through the body from anterior to posterior. It divides into body right and left portions. If this axis passes right through the middle, it is called as mid-sagittal or medium plane. For the aid you understand, slicing a lemon into two portions can describe this plane. When we cut a lemon right in the middle, we get two equal parts, right and left. This plane passing through the middle can be expressed as the mid-sagittal or medium plane. The word medium means the middle. 
exact description of mid sagittal plane is vertical plane which passes through the center of the body and it divides into two equal right and left parts of the body as I mentioned before. Transverse or horizontal plane is also known as plana transversalia in Latin. Transversalia means horizontally, transversely, so it's a plane passing through the body and running parallel to the ground. Transverse plane divides body into superior, which means upper, and inferior, which means lower portions. Radiologists often refer this plane as axial plane or transaxial plane. Anatomical axis. We have completed cardinal planes and movement of horizontal planes as you know. Axes, on the other hand, are defined as imaginary lines around which motion occurs. And as we discussed before, axes are considered on joints. There are three main imaginary axes. Sagittal axis, transverse axis, and vertical axis. Sagittal axis is also known as axis sagittalis in Latin. Sagittal means arrow, and imagine an arrow passing through your forehead. But since it's an axis, this time it will be a line-shaped arrow. So, sagittal axis is an imaginary line running parallel to the ground from front, which means anterior, to back, which means posterior, or from back to front of the body. And this axis passes through frontal plane. So, keep your mind, frontal plane and sagittal axis together. Transverse axis, in Latin is also known as axis transversalis, is an imaginary line runs parallel to the ground from right to left, right dexter, left sinister, or left to right of the body. This axis passes through sagittal plane, so keep your mind, transverse axis and sagittal plane are together. Vertical axis is also known as axis verticalis in Latin. It's an imaginary line that extends from the top of the head to the middle of the soles of the feet as perpendicular to the ground. So basically, vertical plane passes through superior and inferior direction. This axis passes through horizontal plane, so keep your mind, vertical axis and horizontal plane are together. Terms of movement. Movement occurs at joints where at least two bones or cartilages in joints with one another. Flexion. The meaning of this term is to bend. The flexion movement occurs by decreasing the angle between parts of the body or the bones involved. For the upper extremity, flexion of the shoulder. Flexion of the elbow, flexion of the wrist, flexion of fingers is forward bending. It happens to anterior. Flexion movement in lower extremity, flexion of the hip happens to anteriorly. Flexion of the knee joint is backward bending. So that is the bending that occurs posteriorly. Flexion of the ankle. Since the front part of the foot is expressed as the word dorsal, which means back, the flexion towards here is called dorsiflexion. Sole of the foot called as plantar, front part is called as dorsal. So the flexion movement towards the sole of the foot known as plantar flexion and front part flexion called as dorsiflexion of the ankle. Flexion of the toes is towards the sole of the foot. Extension. The term extension means to stretch, open or widen. Therefore, this term expresses the increasing angle between relevant bones or parts in the joint. Basically, bones in the joint, where the movement occurs, move away from each other. For upper extremity, extension of shoulder, extension of elbow, extension of wrist, extension of fingers. For lower extremity, extension of hip, extension of knee, extension of ankle, extension of ankle, is also known as plantar flexion. In some sources, plantar flexion known as foot extension, the flexion movement towards the sole of the foot, that is, the plantar part, is expressed as plantar flexion. Extension of toes occurs toward the dorsum of the foot. If the extension movement exceeds its normal limits, this movement is called as hyperextension. Now, we are seeing hip hyperextension, shoulder hyperextension, and vertebral column hyperextension. Abduction. The word abduction means distancing. Therefore, abduction movement is moving away from the midline in the coronal plane. So we can say median plane in a coronal plane, around sagittal axis as you can remember. For upper extremity, shoulder abduction occurs by the opening the arm to the side. Anatomically speaking, we can say laterally. Wrist abduction is also achieved by opening the hand laterally 
In the normal anatomical position, the thumb side is the lateral side, external side, and the little finger side is the medial, inner side. There are two bones in the forearm. The bone on the thumb side of these bones is the radius. The bone on the side of the little finger is ulna, where the wrist is open to the outside, to the laterally. On the lateral, there are radius. So, the movement with the wrist abduction towards the radius is also called as radial deviation because radius is laying down there. Finger abduction means the movement of distance from the median axis to the each finger is adjacent. Roughly speaking, opening the fingers is finger abduction. For lower extremity, hip abduction is the movement of the leg away from the midline of the body. Toes abduction means the movement of distance from the median axis to the width each toes is adjacent. So we can say spreading or opening the toes. Adduction. The word adduction means approaching the midline. So this term expresses moving toward the midline in coronal plane. Adduction movement is the opposite of abduction movement. For upper extremity, shoulder abduction occurs. The arm moves medially. Wrist abduction is also known as ulnar deviation because it is towards the ulna which lays down on the medial side of the forearm. Adduction of fingers or adduction of digits because fingers means digits in Latin is defined as moving toward the midline of the hand and this midline is actually the middle digit. So roughly speaking, closing fingers defines the adduction of fingers. For lower extremity, adduction of hip means pulling the leg toward or across the body. Adduction of toes means the movement of getting close to the median axis to which each toes is adjacent. Basically, closing toes is adduction of toes. Rotations. Rotations defines turning or revolving a part of the body its longitudinal axis to the root of the rotations named differently. For example, medial rotation happens to internally, so it is called as internal rotation. Internal rotation turns the anterior surface of a limb to the median plane. For example, internal or medial rotation of the arm, shoulder joint, which means, defines the movement of the humerus when an arm flexed at 19 degree at the elbow is internally rotated around the longitudinal plane of the humerus, so that the hand moves toward the midline of the body. Lateral rotation or external rotation turns the posterior surface of a limb to the median plane. Lateral rotation of the arm defines the movement of a humerus when an arm flex at 19 degree at the elbow is externally rotated around the longitudinal plane of the humerus so that the hand moves away from the midline of the body. Hip joint internal rotation or medial rotation occurs when the femur rotates inward to the medial side toward the midline of the body. The knees are turning inwards. As you can see at first, hip joint in neutral position, which knee is 19 degree flexed. And then femur rotates medial side. This movement is hip joint internal rotation. Hip external or hip lateral rotation on the other hand is when the leg rotates outward away from the midline of the body, the knees are turning outwards. As you can see at first, hip joint is in neutral position, which knee is 19 degree flexed. Femur rotates lateral side and this is hip external rotation. Elevation. The term elevation means to lift. Considering the origin and function of the word elevator, it will be easier to remember this term. Since the elevator is an elevating vehicle, elevation actually refers to upward movement. Therefore, elevation is the lifting of the shoulder upwards. The term depression refers to a downward pulling of the shoulder. When you're depressed, your shoulders go down. The relationship between depression and this postural change may help you to memorize this term. Protraction means pulling forward. This term is used to describe forward movement of the shoulders or the mandible, which is one of the bones that make up the temporomandibular joint, which we can say articulatio temporomandibularis. Retraction means pulling back. This term refers to retraction of the shoulders or the mandible, one of the bones that make up the temporomandibular joint. Circumduction, it is a circular movement that is combination of flexion, extension, abduction and attraction, so that this movement occurs in all three planes and axes. There are two joints that are multi-axial where the movement takes place. Circumduction of shoulder. Circumduction of hip. Supination. The term supination means turning outward. It is the outward rotation of the forearm, usually around a long axis of the radius. It is the normal anatomical position as a result of this movement. The palm, that is the waller face of the hand, looks forward. 
Pronation. The term pronation means introversion. It is the movement of the radius when of the bones forming the forearm to rotate around the long axis of the forearm and to turn the forearm inward. In the normal anatomical position, at the end of the pronation movement, the palm, that is the waller side of the hand, faces back. The act of placing your palm on the table is an example of pronation. Opposition. It is the act of joining the thumb with one of the other fingers. Movements such as fastening buttons or holding a pencil are oppositions. Preposition. It is the opposite of this movement. In other words, it is the movement of the thumb move away from one of the other fingers and return to its normal anatomical position. Inversion. The term inversion means turning inward in Latin. This term refers to the rotation of the sole of the foot towards the median plane, one sole of the foot turning to the other side in the normal anatomical position. Aversion, on the other hand, it's the opposite of inversion, meaning to turn outward. So it is the outward rotation of the sole of the foot away from the median plane. Directional terms describe relative locations of different butt structures. These terms are anterior or ventral is generally used to describe front position. It also defines direction toward the front of the body. For example, kneecap is located anterior to the leg. Abdomen is located anterior to the back. Another term synonymous with anterior is ventral. In Latin, venter means belly, so ventral means on the side of the belly. Posterior or dorsal describes the back or direction toward the back of the body. Generally uses for the structures which are located back of the body. For example, shoulder blade is located posteriorly. Superior or cranial describes a position above or higher than another part of the body structure, close to the head and upper parts of the body. For example, shoulder is located superiorly to the hand. Inferior or caudal describes a position below or lower than the other part of the body structure, away from the head, near or toward the tail. Legs are inferior to the pelvis. Lateral describes the side of direction toward the side of the body. Away from the midline of the body, thumb is located lateral side of the hand, can be an example of lateral. Medial describes the middle or direction toward the middle of the body. Toward the midline of the body, we can say. For example, little finger is located medial side of the hand. Proximal describes a position in a limb that is closer to the point of attachment or the trunk of the body. We can say near to the trunk or the point of origin. Distal describes a position in a limb that is farther from the point of attachment or the trunk of the body. We can say away from the trunk. For example, foot, which means pedis in Latin, pedis is distal to the leg. Leg is curus in Latin. In Latin, right means dexter. And left means sinister. Cranial means top of the head. Caudal means tail, so it just shows the inferior part of the body. Anterior or ventral is the front part. Posterior or dorsal part is the back part. As we've seen before, superior shows upper part, inferior shows lower part. Superficial describes a position closer to the surface of the body. For example, the skin is superficial to the bones. Deep or profundus in Latin describes a position farther from the surface of the body. The brain is deep to the skull. These two terms are often used in anatomy. Many structures in the body, especially the skin, are made of layers. For example, if you look at a skin section, the sheet that is under the skin but more superficial is called as fascia superficialis, while the deeper fascia is called as fascia profundus.